This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Oh, cheers, Grace Halbin. Cheers, Memory Heart. Wow, you guys, it's, you're never going to believe this. Another gloomy day in Los Angeles. Another gloomy day in Los Angeles, but that won't deter us. It's a perfect TV watching day. Well, that's, day. here's the thing, yeah. is it has been ideal nighttime cozy cozyville. Yeah, yeah, it has, which is great because we have a fuck ton of TV to talk about this. <laughs> It's like an absurd amount. It's an absurd amount to the point where I, I like I want you guys to give us feedback in the comments, be it on like YouTube yeah. or Insta or Twit X, whatever. Um to tell Twitch us, even like what you we might need to start doing polls of like yeah. which shows do you want us to talk about what this would week? People prefer because we can't with doing so many, yeah. which is you know, the shows I am watching, we we can't get that deep about it. Um, and you already had a podcast called Not Too Deep. Right. And I'm finally ready to get deep about these things. <laughs> and Bowels deep. I mean, luckily for us, I will say, I feel like this is the fattest it gets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah, the yeah, most yeah. we could do is four different shows. But then I also have a lot of people being like, please talk about Love is Blind. And Traitors. Everyone... I haven't watched Traitors, but I've maybe watched lot. every gif of Phaedra Parks. Yeah, I know. That's. I feel like I've maybe been spoiled on a couple things. Absolutely. So uh however i that i watched the first season of that you did uh, yeah and it was surprisingly good i feel like i watched it when like i wasn't feeling well or something and so it was like an easy binge yeah show. next 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 and so it is more interesting than i let on. i watched the first episode of the newest season and uh -huh. i was like okay i can see how this is interesting it's just a lot to get into like yeah. that would need its own episode that's what i'm saying and i feel Same like with love is blind i feel like we could do a love is blind yeah. wrap up but have you been watching the season not yet not yet. I know. I Formula have, One is out too. Well, I've been waiting <laughs> to, and full swing. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I did want to watch that too. Oh, my God. No, Chip is coming back in literally like two oh. hours. He hasn't been home in a month and a half. So we're like, we've got full swing. We've got Drive to Survive. We've got yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm. We've got oh, like, yeah, yeah. I have to watch Curb with my dog, Larry David. You have to. We were watching this last season and it's good it's the last season. Yeah, they've it's, kind it's, of exhausted it. Yeah, even yeah. they seem like they're over their shtick. But, yeah. uh, but I still, it's still enjoyable. Well, let's get into reality television. Yeah. Today we are covering Drag Race, The Bachelor, Vanderpump Rules, and Survivor. <laughs> Not in that order, we shall see. But we yep. will say, like, once we, like, say we're getting into Survivor, if you haven't watched it and you don't want it yeah. spoiled, this is kind of like... Like, we cover drag race late so late, like if you so haven't seen it by now i don't feel bad if you get spoiled <laughs> not a problem but survivor maybe maybe you have that window well let's go through drag race okay first um iconic episode yes snatch game mm. i'm gonna tell you i was a little disappointed he in like total overall yeah. okay let's okay first they did i mean they did it's an incredibly difficult challenge and again i would probably choke if I, I was doing would it would be terrified i feel yeah. like it would be one of those things where I, this is me being you know so humble yeah <laughs> i'd get on drag race and everyone would be like she's gonna crush snatch game yeah. she's gonna be amazing and then i would just you know i hate mm -hmm. i hate designated improv us talking yeah. all day long being on stage good to go yeah. whatever but when someone's like gamify it yeah yeah I hate it. And there's so much pressure because so it's much. a legendary episode that notoriously sifts through like the tops and the bottoms yeah. and really uh, puts people on display. And I think a lot of the queens just felt the pressure. They felt the pressure. Um, like Not to say that anyone did so terrible. Like the, to the tops and the bottoms, I think were correct. I also right. feel like, and maybe this is how it always is. I was like, did we get to see a lot of the queens answer? I feel like they edited around a lot of people. I, I but think who they knows? knew. I think they knew it was weak. Yeah. Um, can I say? Did we used to have celebs judge yeah. it? Why is it just pit crew members? I know now? that's what people were asking. Like, please really? can we get anyone but pit crew members to be the contestants to have a little volley back and forth of some funny business? Yes, I I don't care if they are absolute. D list, yeah. E list, F list. We were around. We, yeah. we were available. Oh my God. That's what we should campaign to do. I know. Me and you, they're never going to let us be judges, but if they let us do Snatch Game. I just first want them to let us come back to the finale shooting. Yeah, just give us one <laughs> ticket out of 4,000. Yeah. That's uh, maybe we should dream a little lower. But okay, so let's kind of go through them. First mm -hmm. of all, I'll say it out of the gate. Yeah. Plain Jane won the week. Yeah, she did Yelena. 
Caruso? I, I think James Brown should have. A lot of people thought Safira should have done. I thought Safira did fantastic. Yes. But I thought that it was like she could have done more, I guess, because she's so great. Yeah. I have really high expectations of her. And I thought she was really funny. And uh, obviously the goal is to make Rue laugh. And, and I think Rue laughed the hardest with the Safira hardest. doing James Brown. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just wished I could have seen more, I guess. I mm. was like, oh, the costume change and everything. Like, the character shoes bit was so funny. So funny. And that it got uh, called back on the runway. Yeah, where it was just like, now she's put uh -huh. like a sequined yeah. belt on it. Uh -huh. And it's killing me. I think they've actually given Safira some grace on how often she wears character yeah. shoes. Because I feel like there's been other seasons where they like, truly Michelle is obsessed with the fact, she, with the kitten yes. heel. Like yeah. she does not like the kitten heel, such as I. Yes. Yeah. They really, now that you see it, you can't unsee it though. Mm -hmm. But I thought Safira did great. I also, my God, the story of her father on this episode of being an MMA trainer. I know. Going from like, not approving of her to approving of her to dying from COVID was like the I most know. emotional story. And like, truly Safira, incredible queen like, and also wow. adding to it like how amazing the dad was at, because like Safira wasn't his biological son yeah yeah and so oh i know that was emotional Whew. um okay let's get back into it but uh, she did so Safira did great plain did really a great job for a character that people didn't even know was a real person absolutely real if you can do that here's my question okay nymphia with mm -hmm. the jane goodall there, as someone I'm talking to who's first Barbie and only Barbie was a Jane Goodall Barbie, correct? Well, my first one was a Native American Barbie. Okay. And then 30 years later, my second you, Barbie was a Jane Goodall you Barbie. You recently got a Jane Goodall Barbie. Yeah. How do you feel about that performance? <clears throat> I was so bummed. I was Me hoping too. that the edit of the teaser for this week was going to be like a bait and switch or like yep. a misdirect. Um, and my dumbass didn't even put it together that she was doing Jane Goodall because of bananas because of bananas until she said it and like rue i was like oh no oh no, <laughs> no. Here, i thought because i was like she just needs a point of view yes and she just, i was like do a horny jane goodall or something yes be like jane goodall was attracted to gorillas yeah. or you know like something you that just need a something that you can filter every answer through the lens of like I if she's horny great everything rue throws at me i'm gonna come back with the horniest answer i can think of exactly the whole idea that if you're bad at doing an impression then like actually lean into that like, yeah the hardest we've laughed all season is when uh, again, I cannot learn the names this season. When Flipper Maya did the impression of, of Cher, bad. it's stupid. It's stupid. Right. Lean into the <laughs> stupidity of it. <laughs> also, they did bring Chad Michaels. Out, yeah, I know, and everyone was waiting for it. Yes, the Cher off that never happened. I had. I was shocked that Rue wasn't like. We actually have someone here who does a fantastic <laughs> Cher impression that'll give you a run for your money. I feel like they talked to Rue and were like, "Stop putting Maya on the spot." Well, it's reading bullying well poor <laughs> maya okay here's what i'll say it's like did a great job pivoting and like doing a made-up character Shaquita. and i love trina the rapper but like you know it doesn't take a lot to like do that like yeah just kind of generalized character yeah i feel like we needed more of that kind of like point of view mixed into the golden tooth fairy i know tsunami it's a fun and idea tsunami. yeah same tsunami is such a sweetheart and so stunning and the idea of doing the golden tooth fairy was a great idea with a lot of potential but again all she needed was a point of view yeah. like what does this character want in this situation instead of just like an and an you collect teeth that's not it Bo bones too yeah <laughs> it was like okay then are we saying the tooth fairy is actually like a murderer like let's right. figure out where we're going with this yeah yeah i felt i felt bad uh and of course, as soon as it starts and you realize like deer in headlights, you're like, oh, no, I know. Absolutely. It was tough to watch. I also feel like the Anna Delvey could have been fun. Yeah. Morphine. But Morphine made a joke. They were like, let me hear your Anna Delvey in the workroom. And she was like, what are you wearing? You look poor. Yeah. And then that was the first thing. I, she, I was like, that's the one joke. And we've said it twice. Know. You know, editors did that on purpose. Totally. I know. I wish that she had just gone with like the accent changing every time yes. and it being totally different. Um, I thought Dawn as Megan McCain was fine. Not great, not I know. bad, but I feel like Dawn is a little 
pixie nymph character could have done so many different I, things. I feel like if Dawn would have done a tooth fairy, yeah, it could have been fucked up and weird. I think the thing with Meghan McCain, and I know Dawn is giving us range, was just kind yeah. of like, Meghan McCain is just a bitch. Yeah. You know, like, sorry, but like, that's kind of what she's known for. She doesn't have a distinct voice. She doesn't have a real distinct point of view, but you know, besides like conservative. Yeah. And so I felt like if anything, she needed to have like Meghan McCain doing the keg stands. Yeah. Meghan McCain doing the crazy stuff. Yeah, Meghan yeah. McCain accidentally showing she's wearing like a Biden shirt. You yeah, know, like just, yeah. just some Being twist. A, uh, uh, yeah. Trying to control her liberalness would be very right. funny. Ugh. Well, uh, it, yeah, it was a kind of a disappointing snatch game. Yeah. Everyone, Plasma went in herself. Oh. Patty Lapone. I'm sorry. We have to do something new, Plasma. Oh, yeah. Plasma in the beginning was worried about pigeonholing herself into a character type and now she's doing patty lapone and also everyone was like how did these queens not know who patty lapone is i agree and i love i love patty lapone just uh, as just like a human yeah like i i'm not a big musical theater person no i know of her as an icon in the musical theater world i couldn't tell you anything specific i talked to tim yesterday and one of the first things he said to me he goes do you know who patty lapone is i was like i know of he's like okay great i'm just making sure he's like yeah everyone knows <laughs> she's had some viral moments too of being like she shushed people from stage <laughs> and and also been like, whose phone went off? Like she has stopped yeah. productions because she truly is like a theater icon and wow. she wants you to respect it. But so, yeah, it's like Plasma did a decent impression, but I yeah. feel like Plasma is just doing like hall of Broadway yeah. divas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. At this point, she's got to do something different. Something I also crazy. Q as Amelia Earhart was just Q doing the brick again. <laughs> and you know that I didn't love the brick. I know. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Ru, from up here. <laughs> I'm is, flying. Maybe it's because it's kind of our aunt's characters and it's hitting a little too close to home for us. Who knows? Oh, we'll go on. We'll oh. judge Snatch Game as the ants. Well, there we go. They all made it through Snatch yeah. Game. I thought the lip sync at the end of Morphine versus Tsunami and the amazing. sisterly like sweetness in it was so sweet that if you're going to go out, have a blast and make it fun. And I, I thought Tsunami chills. did a great job. I yeah. just got cold chills. <laughs> like the thing is, it's such high stakes, but all these people or most of them really do become friends. And we know yeah. that from years later, pe seeing people who are in seasons together still be friends. Friends. Yeah. And so having that moment, I always love Super it. Sweet. I all, I mean, I love a good one where it's like truly like, let me do a cartwheel and yeah. no, I hate a cartwheel. Let me do a back handspring split in front of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? To really like show I'm dominating. But when they are sweet to each other, it gets me. It every was time. cute. Um, but let's talk about. Mm hmm. Survivor. All right. Let's get into Survivor. My new favorite show Woo! as of just like a year ago. Yeah. Being like into it yeah what are your thoughts about this premiere episode this is the first time we've talked about survivor like this this is very I know. exciting we've mentioned it on the regular podcast yeah. but this is the first time we're like getting in from the top of it okay i get nervous on these big debut episodes because there's so much information yes because there's every character's new I mm -hmm. so I don't know everyone's names i barely know anyone's no. names i know a couple names and that's just because i don't like them Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay, so you're learning everyone. You also know that, like, people come on and you're either a person who's trying to make an impression or lay low. And, yes. Until you can kind of just, like, get through the first few eliminations. Yes, everyone's, like, feeling each other out, desperately trying to not get a target on their back by being any sort of way that is standout exactly. <laughs> in any way. Um, I think that this group of people have way less actual survivor skills. Yes, this group gave off theater kid energy to yep. me in a big way. My biggest, uh, my first notes were after the opening sequence where they're like showing um, voiceovers of people like on the boats as they're arriving yes. to the island. Elliot just goes, where are the adults? Like, this is a young season to me. Uh -huh. There's not like an older, wiser or older, more mature person on any of these teams. I thought the exact same thing. I was watching it and I was like, but where's the guy that looks like a sailor, was a Marine and right. is going to take charge to get the shelter together? Right. Because I saw like the next day, like there was one moment where like Jess, uh, who's sleep deprived, was yeah. being like, just when I finally was getting some sleep and you see like the shelter like fall on them. I'm like, that's the best you did. Yeah. I feel like in previous um, in previous seasons of the few I've watched, they would have gotten that and, and commented like how bad they are all at it or something like. Right. It, it, also, this season, 
I feel like they cut. At one point, I was like, did they give them all of the bamboo, bamboo. pre cut? Okay. Because I was I like, I have this note too, and at one I point was they were, shook. They were just introducing themselves, yet they're standing next to a huge pile of pre cut bamboo that I'm like, wow, they're making it really easy for them I now. I thought the same thing. I know I, it's not easy. It's not easy, but I've never assumed they gave them bamboo and they, and so i was like wait do they put it in the jungle and they just make them carry it to the beach is Maybe. this a new thing right that's Did- it because it was like all very well measured very because i know that uh, listen table every, saw every single person is a survivor super fan now yeah which is interesting i uh, do i wish that some people were on it being like I'm a survivalist. I'm not a huge fan of this show, but like I could I'm, kick ass. Yeah. My wife thought I'd be great for this or something. I don't know. Uh, so everyone's a super fan. So they all know exactly like the beach setups before they're going in because they all talk about it on Reddit forums and oh. stuff. Like it's all laid out there, like at all the details and all the specifics. Because it's the same island. The yeah. Last same few seasons like camp setups. Fiji? Okay. Um, I think they just use that. They repurpose the same areas. And so I was like, oh, the they're just cutting down and letting them just have this like, here's your camp. Just kind of tie it together. Yeah. <laughs> to make it easier. It's pre them? it's prefabricate. It's prefab. That's what it feels like. Yeah. It's like a, a tiny home or yeah. something. <laughs> no, it felt really weird. And again, I don't know if this is because, you know, look, they changed the rules up after COVID. They made the season like uh Shorter, but more intense, not giving them rice, not giving them anything out of the gate. So they'll literally be times where it's like none of you guys have eaten in 11 days. So I don't know if maybe, you know, on production side that we don't see, they were like, this is like too intense. That's what I was wondering, too, why there were everyone seemed younger. I was like, is it a health issue? Is it like Mm. they need to make sure people aren't like hurting themselves? Because my other notes were the first episode Gives me a lot of anxiety yeah, and excitement because the first episode is where everyone's a little squirrely in the challenges. And this is where mm. we see injuries happen because everyone gets really excited that their dreams are coming true and they're right. on the show. And so they try to overperform or they just don't know their limits in some way. And so I was like pacing around the house watching this every time a challenge mm-hmm. started because I was like, ooh, this is where someone's going to get hurt. Someone's going to pick up a puzzle piece, <laughs> refuse to look too weak, yeah. and dislocate their shoulder. Exactly. The one girl was carrying it behind her back. <laughs> like, she was the mid, like, butterfly stroke in the yeah. pool. It was too much. Okay, let's talk about who we like, who we don't like. Um, Again, skip forward if you don't want spoilers. Yes. Hate Jelinski. So happy he went home. Me? I mean, this Sorry, guy. hate's a strong word. I, this guy, I was like, because he reminds us so much of the Napoleon Dynamite character from last season, whose oh, name I'm forgetting now. Yes. But they're like cut from the same cloth. And I was like, man, this guy is failing at every single thing he says he's going to do. Yep. And it doesn't seem to phase him. It like, did. I would be mortified if mm-hmm. I was like, for my tribe, I am going to do this physical challenge for you. And then I was like can't do it well also and then i'm gonna go on the boat first and take this excursion Mm -hmm. and And i'm I'm gonna do the puzzle i'm gonna do the puzzle yeah the confidence i mean he he said during tribal council after speaking in third person a lot he said this is the first time i've ever spoken in third person i don't believe it um that's clear (laughs) clearly your last name you you go by your last name because you like to speak in third person about it but here's my biggest takeaway issue of the whole premiere two hours yeah i have never in my whole life as someone who routinely gets called out on saying things wrong have heard someone say that the word several means seven (laughs) and he i don't even know for sure if he understood by the end of the episode that he was making a wrong connection like, i don't think he did i think i probst was even like yeah wait several doesn't mean seven and everyone was like that's not what it means and he was like that's what i've always heard right and i not even to the point of being like am i wrong right am i like i don't even know if he walked away thinking like oh god i've been wrong about that my whole life and what a platform to realize that mistake that was and to go uh, uh, how many times he said, well, I'm not a quitter yeah. when he quit everything he did. And also, here's what I'd like to ask. During the water bucket challenge, yeah. when he thought this will take seven hours and we only have four, we might as well quit an hour into it. 
are you supposed to break the the sand thing the hourglass when you're finished i think i think it was when you're done you're supposed to break it but not the way that now we just have glass (laughs) on the beach someone tweeted the production assistant that had to walk on the beach and clean up all the glass that you just now we're vacuuming the beach i cannot stand jelinski and so Uh, i was sitting there it's so funny because chip gets home today and I was watching it like through the lens of him. Yeah. And I was like, I know he would be like, this guy's got to go. Yeah. This guy's got to go. He's. Did you see what his job was? No. Slot machine salesman. Stop it. Jelinski was a slot machine salesman. And I was like, something is up with this character. Uh, Interesting, dude. He also had Um, he was just so tall. He had like Andre the Giant voice. Yeah. He had yeah. Giant man voice. Yeah. So it, Which, I mean, he had you. quite a an episode and everyone was so happy because in the past it has been very heavily that women get voted off first so yes. this is an iconic episode in which a male and rightly so like a person that did deserve to get voted off yeah. got voted off i was glad that q stood up and was like he isn't telling yeah. the truth about his strengths like yeah. jess is weaker and she's clearly like losing her mind a little bit from and lack of sleep that, the fact that jeff doubled down in the tribal council and was like you might never and probably will never be able to shake off those nerves i was like holy shit he's breaking her in front of everyone right now he's going hard because the fact is you gotta keep those emmys flowing in and two people quit on their own accord last season season. and i don't think jeff's over that really i I think he is pissed off about that at least i like to believe that uh that's what's happening i like that i like that theory a lot because it's true it's like the amount of effort that goes into casting and the amount of people who apply and then you leave so like good on jess for uh, there was a minute there where i thought she was gonna go i think i should go yeah i know that's what i was thinking someone was gonna give up and i think that's what jeff was making sure that they don't do i love her too she was the one who has the identical twin right yes i love it she goes like and i'm like so weird and just cuts to a picture of her wearing a bag on her head with a smiley face (laughs) drawn on it and i was like this feels like something where a like a a person yeah. goes like do something weird and it's like <laughs> that's that was your weirdest photo yeah so funny also Jelinski Ugh. gave up the challenge with one of my favorite people Tevin who's I'm, like setting himself up as like the narrator of this season I love Tevin I love his perspective Amazing way with words yes Tevin is, and also sorry uh, Tevin's love for Andy Griffith yeah <laughs> <laughs> Is so funny to me because, you know, I grew up from like 10 minutes from Andy Griffith. Like my mom taught at Mount Airy, Mayberry High School. Like wow. we like played them in football. And so Andy Griffith is like a very local thing to me. That yeah. then I go like, oh, right. It was a big television show when there weren't many television shows. And when yeah. he busted that out and Immediately. said the Andy Griffith Alliance, I could not. <laughs> and it's broken. It's or no, it's still intact. It's a different guy on his team. But the fact that uh, Jelinski just backed down immediately when Tevin was like, no, I actually have the card and you need to know that because it's going to change your life if you don't choose me. Like, I was like, yes. he's got, and Jelinski was like, he's actually right. Like, in what world do you go, I got to align with uh-huh. these guys because I'm going to make it to the merge and I'm going to need them on my side and then go back and say that flat out to your team? To your team. Well, I was going to say, I thought that was actually brilliant gameplay by Maria. Yeah. Maria Mama 4 had them all no drugs. <laughs> i'm like wow maria you're really painting out that your threshold for pain is no fucking joke i know but she's the, a she's a parent coach or something oh wow okay yeah. damn okay but the way she said and i hadn't seen this in the seasons that i've watched where she was like tell me or i'll go tell my whole tribe yeah yeah Ooh, that was great like she's setting up a move yeah. to like say like you'll be fucked after merge yeah. unless you do what i say right now i was like this is uh-huh. baller and then she was like and then he told me the truth and i feel powerful and i'm like that's how a psycho is born yeah. <laughs> there you go. i'll take it um i love tevin i think so funny yes yeah. i have this the way he rolled up to cut bamboo did they already have cut bamboo yeah um i will say soda yeah, I feel like it's going to be a contender, but I, I have mixed feelings about her. Did you see the clip of her taking the immunity idol away? Like as soon as Jeff presented her team with it, he presented it to the no. girl that's getting confused or Pavardi. P- 
pa- is that poverty? I What's don't know. Old, this woman that is iconic in the yes, yes, lore. yes. Which yes. I haven't seen that season, so I tried to avoid that clip. I think yeah. I might have skipped forward a little. Well, their team wins the challenge, and he hands them the immunity statue or whatever, yeah. and he's handing it to that girl, and then Soda just grabs <gasps> it and like presents it to the team, and it's so funny. I, she doesn't even realize what she's doing, but it's very. But That's, she's so she's a camp counselor. She's well, big camp counselor energy. She's like I think she's a special needs teacher yeah. and a camp counselor and like bless her we love you know we love the enthusiasm but i felt like out of the gate and th- trust me i love a pun you know she yeah. said from the gecko when oh, they were having to lift that crazy ass gecko which yeah. did not have bloodshot o- bloodshot eyes jeff he was like a big gecko <laughs> with huge a huge feet and tail yeah. and bloodshot eyes i was like there's this eyes gecko's eyes are clear yeah. but anyway soda did a couple good puns which I appreciated. Like she said, yeah. sodar, like, oh, great. like sonar. Um, but I think she's trying to get in too many sound bites because when yeah. they were doing the gecko challenge, yeah, I, I, know co- exactly what you're I couldn't say. hear the top of it, but she said something, something, something like a Christmas ham. She said, attack <laughs> this like a hungry man on a Christmas ham. Something along oh, those lines. Because I had my closed captions on and I rewound that a couple times to be like, <laughs> she's saying this off camera. She's not even on screen and they kept this sound by, you better attack this like a starving man on a Christmas ham. I was like, what oh she's going for sound bites exactly i was like oh she has said a couple funny things in her life that people responded to yeah. and she has got them banked for like i don't know yeah she, she wants so well it's she's doing be, a good job but damn she's doing a great job but it'll be interesting because there have been people in the past that get rubbed the wrong way by someone having too much energy and right. so i'm curious to see like one the other guy on her team was like i also went to camp and one of the things i hated were camp songs well i have never felt such a bond with someone on this <laughs> show um i forget his name i think he is gonna go incredibly far yes um but i watched it and i was like yeah exactly you're the one over Hunter. here actually mm-hmm. like cutting bamboo and putting things together yeah i mean soda started the fire very quickly which i almost was like I would have fudged it a little more. You've almost got a target on your back for how fast you were with that flint. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's it. You got, I don't know how you play it. How do you play it? So middle of the road Mm -hmm. that everyone, uh, isn't thinking that you're a uh, competition. Absolutely. Um, uh, Poor Liz. Okay, I have one quote. Eggs give me incredible brain fog. That one woman that's allergic to everything. Oh I was my like, God. oh no, they're setting us up that something's going to happen to this woman. <laughs> or that it's, yeah, exactly. It's like she's going to have not eaten for 11 days and, uh-huh. and the reward is eggs. Yeah. Um, I have a quote too from Kinsey that just goes, and I'm in the beauty industry, so I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And then it cuts to her salon. That girl, okay. Yeah. I like her. She's so familiar to me that I'm like, do we know this person? And the one thing I didn't love is just like they're going around doing like little unique handshakes on day one with each other, being like, we're in this alliance, pinky kiss, and all that. And That's I'm like, what I don't like. This is a bit much for me out of the gate. Lots of, and I don't mean this in an offensive way, just like theater kid, bonded, very dramatic energy Mm -hmm. but i also understand this is everyone's dream yeah well everyone is bonding and the fact that a they're going to be in this together hopefully for a long time and b they have one very distinct thing in common which is they love this show but yeah there were moments where i was like this is an island of plasmas (laughs) yes from drag race yes exactly because even when it's too fast It's, it's like when people are like Sorry, I just yeah. like being from the South. There were so many people that like, and it's it's definitely a regional thing, at least I think it is, where you'll know someone and you'll barely know them. Yeah. And they'll be like, love you. And, like, that's a big thing. Yes. Like, I have people be like, hey, Mame, how are you? We miss you. Love you on like Facebook. And yeah. I'm like, you were my drive through bank teller. <laughs> like, I don't know you. How do yeah. we, lo- how are we dropping love you? And it yeah. feels a little bit like that. Well, Banu uh who's i love banu i love banu but also like banu was crying when they had to go to tribal council but at the same time banu's like you gotta step it up like there's a i don't know if you saw the trailer for next episode Mm -mm. there's a clip of them in the challenge and they're like one of the girls like drops something he just goes yes like (laughs) screaming the microphone sorry Sorry for everyone's ears (laughs) i tried to back up but you guys will see it he's like so passionate about it so i don't mind his like 
theatrical nature yes because he actually will call people out for not doing like when he's like you gotta step it up you can't quit it literally anything it's out important here. to him because uh, yeah. two things banu got american citizenship left the yeah. courthouse or the the government building and applied to survivor that same day yeah. which makes so much sense that you have to be an american citizen they've never like yeah. weaved in like you know yeah. how like love island they'll be like now we're bringing in people from london and scotland oh, okay. and whatever you know they kind of do it all over the place so uh, i love banu also this could be controversial hmm. i think banu uh he is indian correct i believe so i believe he I believe he said he's from. Well, India. he's in Massachusetts or now, where? So oh, well, well, where he uh, immigrated from? Yeah, I think he looks like Indian Flula. I thought the same. Are you serious? And I, I had been meaning to say it to Elliot the entire episode. I'm like, why does he remind me of Flula? He I, reminds me of Flula, and I think you. it's their jaw lines. Grace, it's him. absolutely their jawline. I literally, <laughs> Did you I, I was gonna make a layout of. Yeah, yeah. He looks. I mean, obviously, like Flula is like jacked and everything like that. But I was like, this guy. Yeah. For some I reason, the their jawline, their nose, and yeah. like the way that, like when they're listening, they can look serious. I was like, yeah. this is Indian Flula. Yeah, yeah. I, I had the exact same thought. That's wild. Because I'm I took so it away because I was like, maybe I'm just misreading <laughs> this. <laughs> I okay. almost didn't say it, and that's why I was like, this could be controversial, but. Grace, the fact that you had that same exact yeah. thought makes me crazy. So relieved. Yeah, same. Because I was like, why am I keep thinking this? Anyway, just watch the episode. Take notes. Um, that's wild. I also think Hilarious. Banu is gonna get a lot of screen time because I do they're too. so charming. I so. think um Banu and uh, Tevin. Tevin are gonna be some big stars. And also I went on Banu's um Instagram because I was trying to find the perfect picture yeah. to splice with Flula. Um and he's a goofy guy. Yeah. Lots of dancing, lots of putting on a filter and doing characters. Great. Wonderful. Perfect. Uh, okay. Well, we'll keep our eyes on them. We've got a lot of Survivor to go. I can't wait. Looks like it's going to be a good season. I think I'm so, too. Curious. I was Interesting, too, because the last season that Chip and I went back and watched was David versus, versus Goliath. And yeah. it's interesting, like, how they decide when to make it a theme or not. Yeah, that's what I at first I was like, oh, everyone's younger. Is this going to be like a millennials versus Gen Z theme, mm -hmm. which I they think they've done before? They have. Like they that. did yeah. like boomers versus yeah. millennials versus gen z or yeah something. and this one's no theme no right? theme okay i mean well, we we'll see. we see a theme yeah well i mean it is very we'll see we'll see i don't want to say anything i mean a bunch of patty lapones <laughs> yeah Here we and go. maybe this is my own i was never a theater kid and i was theater kid adjacent so maybe this is just me being like that I again I know like it makes me realize why I could never fully be a theater but kid. here's the you thing you sort of were I had a theater degree yeah I mean I wasn't like doing a bunch of plays in college I did one but yeah. I did them in high school so I, it was never like my full bag I was never fully yeah. immersed and again like I don't I, I don't like know the the ballads from yeah. all these songs but like I would say I had theater kid yeah stuff in my life and I had camp counselor, and I'm still annoyed by all these people. <laughs> well, this season, I really want to find a bar that we can go watch an Ooh, episode live at and yes. like react with everyone in a room together. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, now let's move on. Should we just go over The Bachelor real quick? Yeah, let's do it because, I mean, there were big moves because we're getting to hometown, but there yeah. wasn't like a ton of drama besides Maria almost sending herself home. Everyone was spiraling this episode. Yeah, it's true. Basically, other than... Kelsey, the Kelsey he kept. Yes, Kelsey, I believe A from New Orleans. Yes. Just say New Orleans Kelsey. New Orleans Kelsey. So this episode, everyone's kind of spiraling. I have a note that says, Jesus, him in this motorcycle. <laughs> every episode starts with him riding in yep. on a motorcycle. He's always on wheels. I will say, okay, so the people. And then the, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. They, uh, my next note was, why are they putting Daisy on a horse in front of him? Literally, Grace? <laughs> The first episode, what? I could be wrong, but my our first episode where we talked about the Bachelor premiere and yeah. or like when she was talking about her clo uh, cochlear yeah. implant and I was like, and we were like, why would this be? A f a, oh, you were like, and they brought her to a concert. I was like, yeah, yeah but it'd be worse if they literally had them on like horseback. <laughs> yeah. I think I said that. Yeah. <laughs> because she can't see him and she needs to see him. Yeah. And I felt so, I was like, are we not going to call out that? Is he going to be like, she seems distant. She's not talking right. that much. I also just need to say, speaking of distance, like. I think Daisy is boring officially. 
And I don't understand this connection they supposedly have. I thought it was going to go the way because Daisy was hinting at the fact that she isn't there yet. I love that they use Me these too. dumb terms of can you get there? I'm not there. And I'm like, there. I'm like, are you about to come? What's right. happening? <laughs> that they don't say love. They say there. Can yeah. I get there? Do you think you can get there? Can you I'm visualize not there yourself yet. getting there? Yeah. Are I you love... on the way there? Have you left the house? I would love to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Is it traffic? Is it traffic? They, uh, but they were making it seem, I was going to be like, this is kind of refreshing if Daisy's like, actually, I'm not really into you. Like, and but it didn't go as big as fear. Way. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I I can't tell. This doesn't feel as genuine as the other matches might feel to me. However, I feel like they're also producing it up because yeah. then it goes from the gate, from their like end of the, you know, the the flash forward they did um, where he's like at the altar and he's like, yeah. my biggest fear is being rejected at, at the altar or whatever. So I'm like, maybe Daisy is his person because yeah. like, again, oh, this is the drama of like, Am I going to choose someone who doesn't want me? And she's getting the like, I'm not sure about this edit. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Maybe they are feeding us some breadcrumbs about um, that. I'm going to miss other Kelsey. That did Cirque du Soleil. I can't believe he cut her. I, me okay, too. First of all, my big takeaway notes are I'm sh a bit shocked yeah. that he cut Jen and he cut Kelsey T. And he kept Rachel, who they really haven't shown, at least me. Right. Maybe I haven't seen it. And I saw some tweets about this, too, that were like, I don't see the connection. Like, they're not Same. showing us unless they're not showing us something and they have a more of a connection because she just keeps comparing him to her dad so and her much. family. And I'm just like, that seems, I don't know, like a lot. Yeah, I don't really, I don't see it with Rachel. I thought she was so cute when they did the first group date yes. and she did the toast as the bride. And I think even their first date, but... Uh, you know we're on the bachelor and maybe they're editing it out but like if you've been dating someone for a month regardless of on tv or not like you need to want to jump each other's bones yeah yeah and i feel like rachel just kind of acts like they've been dating for five years and oh. like she's totally comfortable yeah she showed him photos of her parents when they were younger yeah. on their date I've never even shown Elliot, like, here's my dad and stepmom and my mom and stepdad when they were younger. Chips Are never you met my yet? parents. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, exactly. Like, ease up on the family of it all. Yeah. I mean, I know they're getting ready for hometowns. And I do feel like some of the women, uh, like Jen, I did appreciate her honesty of being like, um it'll be uncomfortable for you to meet my family. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to tell you. And I was like, oh, is he out now? Because she said that. But mm. I, like, think that's really admirable to just say that flat out rather yeah. than, like, getting to hometowns and being like, ha sorry. Yeah. Or, you know, th even though producers came in and turned my living room into world market, <laughs> yeah. we still don't get along. Um, and they don't agree with this process. Right. And they're not going to be nice to you or something. I don't know. I was never a Jen fan. Yeah. And ever since like she was, you know, conspiring with uh, or like not conspiring, but like agreeing that Maria was being, you know, that whole yeah. rem remember Sydney. Like, yes. How long ago was that? I will say I'm ex I feel like he has the most chemistry with uh, with Kelsey from New Orleans. Kelsey T. Oh, Kelsey. Yeah. From New Orleans. Yeah. I think their date was really cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also fell into a TikTok hole of hers. Oh, really? She's very funny. Great. She's self-deprecating because I guess everyone is like in her on her Instagram saying her teeth are yellow. And so she's just like, so she's doing so many TikToks about it that are so funny. That's great. But also on her TikTok, she's like, we'll show her and her girlfriends going out. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you're gorgeous. Yeah. Like she's not glamming up the same way that not that you need to. She is beautiful all natural. But I was watching and I was like, oh, yeah. your style is totally different than the show. And you like act. Yeah. Like here she feels a little like granola hippie. They all do. It's so funny to see all the clothes that they wear in every scene that I'm like, this is like a JCPenney ad every single scene. I know. Here. Except for Maria's always something a little midriff. curious. Oh, midriff Maria. Uh, <laughs> did you know that? So the I saw this, that there is a Vin Diesel movie called The Pacifier. You know how every you know how every big buff guy does a movie where he's some type of nanny? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> every single one. So he is a nanny called the pacifier and someone was like, oh, Maria, she's got those acting credits. She has a line as like a Girl Scout. 
she where she's yelling at Vin Diesel. Okay, Ma- that's amazing. And maybe I miss read this but i was seeing tweets of something like she was a one direction groupie and might have sort of dated one of the guys in the past like worked her way into that world that is not i have no idea i thought i saw tweets that were inferring that is her history and how people kind of like what they found out about her i love that and it also (laughs) makes me feel so old i know i know i know (laughs) the uh well okay i did think their lumberjack date was incredibly stupid and then being forced to drink an entire cup of elk milk at the end of it and like almost throwing up i was pissed (laughs) i was pissed and it was also just like What's her face chugged it and she was like, I'm allergic yeah. to, to dairy protein uh. or whatever. And then Joey being like, Ugh, this is so gross. I'm like, Great. So you're making these girls yeah. chug a thing that he's ultimately grossed out by. Yeah. Anyway, That's I thought Elliot was like, I'm gonna say this again. I don't think this show likes women. <laughs> You know, I'm starting to think that way a little However, bit. However, you guys have never watched a full season of The Bachelorette. I know. That's, uh, and I have they to have that. to do some pretty dumb shit, too. That'll be fun to watch. Um, We have hometown dates next week. I'm so excited. Yes. I, I love- uh spirals and goes into an absolute contradiction of herself of just being like, I can't keep seeing him with other women while this is happening. And they all kind of were feeling that way, which I yeah. get. But it's also like. Come on. (laughs) So you care about him so much. You're so jealous. You have to go home. Also, I'm like, were you sent? I think she was doing that just to be comforted. And then she was like, oh, shit. He just found out, said, so are you leaving then? Yeah, I know. I thought she ran into the other room to be chased. That she was like, I want someone to chase me, too, the way he's being chased. And then literally was like, "Uh, I'm going to be over here. (laughs) I also didn't know if Maria, because now that I know she is like an actress and like all that jazz and like you can tell by like her relationship with her dad, she's a big daddy's girl, you know, like (laughs) center of attention type of thing. I'm like, is Maria trying to make sure she's the bachelorette? That I mean, that was kind of the vibes I got from the beginning, which I didn't mind that I was like, she's being quirkier and she is standing out than all of these other girls. Um, but now I can't really tell if she likes him or she just likes the attention of yeah, it. I don't same, know. Same. But we shall see. Next also, week. was she drinking a Bloody Mary at night? There's a scene where they're all girls are talking and it's like comfy, cozy. And one girl has a glass of red wine and she is literally a glass of red juice nope. with a rim of. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, the previous week she had a glass of red juice with 20 cherries in it. No, this had like literally a lemon like a or salty lime rim? and a salty rim. Probably because uh, what's the one they do in Canada? The Caesar? Caesar, maybe. So maybe she was like getting her Cana- Canadian. Canadian on. All yeah. right, let's talk about Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules. There's not a ton to report because to me, it's still the Tom um, apology tour. However, I don't yeah. like that he's he's wedging his way back in. Look, Lisa Vanderpump. <sighs> kind of fucked up for me this episode she fucked up i mean when she said uh first of all why is graham on a private jet (laughs) and this dog that has everyone saying has bit people let's bring him to a public space with a bunch of strangers Uh and keep him on a small enclosed private jet i'm like they either drug that dog up to the heavens so it could produce on camera without biting right he was even on like even just them going to tahoe it's like you just got this dog back be like i'm gonna have to sit this one out so my pup can acclimate that dog has bit more people than biden's (laughs) like it's crazy it is nuts which it's like it's fine like we know difficult dogs whatever but the fact that yeah i'm like i would never in a million years bring a dog that has bit someone out of a place that is, where they're in solitude and they're comfortable. Like uh, it was so rough. What about that fight between Sheena and Brock in the bikini? I love store? that the store was a walk-in closet, and that's where he decided to pick a fight. I love. I gotta love it because she's like, "Stop talking!" Like literally, that's the uh-huh. reality TV. Like you are mic'd up. Please, I know you're continue. You just want to get your point across, but I need you for our integrity to stop giving them your audio Uh (laughs) uh-huh absolutely um so that was hilarious um i also oh god i think i'm gonna say the cringiest moment of the episode besides lisa vanderpump saying she's doing photo shoots with wolves is giving very joey graceffa it was those were huskies right (laughs) that's what i couldn't like can you actually hang out with a wolf one of those name was oliver and it's like the restaurant's mascot that 
I don't know if it was a big husky or a wolf. I'm not sure. It felt like a big husky. I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I feel like wolves are like three times as big as a dog. Like yeah, they're, and they're, they're actually like, wildly huge, like lion huge. Yeah. We've had coyotes like up and down our driveway, but not a full on wolf. No, uh, wolves don't live here. That's what I right? assumed, but that's maybe that's the magic of Lisa Vanderpump is that her mythology is she's tamed this wolf and turned it into a restaurant. I guess so. Well, that was very cringy for me. And yeah. I also saw a meme that was so funny that was like, um, it showed like her looking at the wolf and someone was like, it's so nice that Bella and yeah. uh, what's his face? Jacob, Jacob stayed Edward. in touch. <laughs> Oh God, the okay. The two things. How big a wolf is? That's okay. crazy. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the two things when she said, "James, say one good thing about Sandoval." I was like, "She is really reaching to produce this, and I okay. it's too transparent to me." Uh huh. And then the way she ended that dinner, I was like, "She must have got a little tipsy because she realized things are out of her control." She goes, "Raise your glasses and howl to the moon," and makes them all howl. At the moon. Okay, I have so many thoughts. <laughs> Because uh, so cringiest moment for me, yeah. it was when Sandoval took a selfie with Brock, oh. and, and Brock, you saw his face immediately realize, oh fuck, yep. this guy's gonna post a selfie, yeah. like we're friends, and like you know yep. the season's just filming, and then him reassuring him by going, I don't take selfies for myself. So then it's like, so then are you saying you're taking that to send to Raquel, yeah. who has a restraining order against my wife. Like, what are we doing, bro? I, it doesn't make any sense. It was terrible. Yeah. Also, why did Lisa fly them up? I thought the restaurant was finished. That's what I it thought It was too. a construction site. I know. All of it was confusing to me. And then when <laughs> Tom Sandoval took the sledgehammer and yeah. started saying things that bothered him, like, bruh. Oh, man. man. The thing is, is that he keeps coming down hard on Rachel for like going into fa a facility. Yeah. And it's like, you needed to, man. You yeah. didn't need to go on another reality yeah. show in New Zealand. Yeah. You needed to also step away. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is an unhealthy place for you to be on, regardless of whether you're playing it up or mm -hmm. down. Like, at least she took herself out of a toxic situation or someone took her out of a toxic... Who knows? Yeah. Um, but now it's coming back around. Like, the news this morning is that oh, she's... Yeah. What is it? She's suing Ariana and Tom Sandoval for like revenge porn for invasion of privacy or slander or something. Here's what I don't understand is I absolutely I remember when, you know, we learned of the scandal and how Ariana yeah. found out and it was the video or the FaceTime of her masturbating or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I absolutely understand there's probably a legal lawsuit yeah. if she wanted to say, I didn't know I was being recorded. Yeah. You know, I don't know like what the terminology is for that but like what did ariana do or what did she did claim she send it to people did she send if it she to other people to, to other, prove what she saw if she sent it to other people then that is yeah i technically mean by law i guess there is look if if she found it on her phone yeah i guarantee she probably immediately texted it to herself so yeah. that he couldn't go erase erase and be like you were drunk last night babe yeah. like what are you talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. but so Raquel is really keeping her foot in the legal door yeah I will say some closure for me this week yeah was them acknowledging the Lego portrait yes okay two things <laughs> There's two things of closure, I think, for you this week. Okay. The other thing that they acknowledge before that is that something about her is not open because someone pooped on the patio and they're having patio licensing issues with the restaurant. So that was helpful to learn, albeit I don't know if I would want to go to that restaurant knowing someone's just been shitting in the backyard. I'm like, who... And can we get the footage of Tom doing that? Yeah, exactly. Is the big question. But they now acknowledge your Lego suspicion. Thank you. And that the artist was happy to redo the Lego so it was just her. Because I'm like, yeah. are we are we not ever going to talk about the fact that you still have a giant, probably weighs 300 pounds portrait of yeah. Legos of the two of you? So I felt good about that. Yes. I definitely felt good about that. Um, what it do you is, I mean, this season it's interesting. is... Not as, I guess, interesting to watch because it does feel like they're forcing this like Sandoval redemption arc, which I think is just like the worst thing they could do for him, especially because people 
hate it more. People hate it more. Than if he wasn't there at all this season. Here's the thing. This season, I hate to say it, it needed Raquel. Yeah. Yeah. Because now we're just talking about someone who, uh, um, which granted, she's doing a lot of talking now, but like previously, like... Tom is trying to do this friendship redemption and every time he talks to Schwartz, he yeah. he acts like nothing happened. Yeah. Um, and it's so awkward. But like every time he's talking about Raquel being in the facility, it's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Everyone hated her. That's cool. it's like that's mental trauma. Yeah. And well, that's what she's suing is because I think the lawsuit even says like became the most hated woman in America for no like real reason i mean obviously obviously reasons but also yeah she she didn't there are murderers yeah yeah but also (laughs) can you imagine like when he's like my text went from green to blue she went to this mental facility to understand her unfortunate tragic obsession with you and to like break her own cycle and the first text that she gets is like i miss you from this guy like yeah, oh, that's so terrible. We'll oh. see what happens, but this this whole episode was yeah. just confusing. It felt um, like a filler episode too, and it, it felt like just a commercial for for Wolf, which is what Lisa Vanderpump, to her credit, does so well. Hey, this is a Vanderpump commercial, uh, and that's the whole show was started yeah. around Sir, yeah. so we totally get it. How do you feel about renaming Graham Hippie? The dog has to listen to a name that has the same like rhyming syllables. Yeah. I would assume that, like name like, him Sam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hippie. It, I mean, I guess that's cute, and I'm for them taking like. I'll give Allie a lot of credit. That girl <gasps> is putting up with a lot of being like, I have my cats. They've never met a dog before, yeah. and it's your ex, and I just can't get this girl out of my life that I'm trying to have. With and you. yeah, I mean the the fact that. Graham was a surprise, or at least that's how they played it. When she has cats, I would be fucking pissed. Yeah, yeah. I'd be like, so your dog who has behavior issues... Yeah, just and she now lives with my cats. And I do appreciate that she's like sitting with Sandoval being like, what did the dog do? Like she wants yeah. the specifics like that's a responsible owner being yeah. like, what is the dog's history so that if we train him, we know what we're dealing with right yep. now. Now she like, has she's... to have two wild animals in the house. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I don't, this season is not as exciting to me, I no. guess. But I mean, that was going to be the case anyway. The last season was insane. Yeah, you can't. It's it's kind of like, you know how they'll you think a show is ending and you're yeah. kind of like, oh, see finale. And they're like, we gave it another season. You're like, yeah. why don't we end? Yeah. Why didn't we end yeah. on the good stuff? Like, don't do this weird reunion. We're coming back. But um, honestly, we have so much TV to talk about Truly. that. Like, it's kind of good. Nothing is happening. over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Very true. Oh, you guys. Woo. Oh, this was fun. I'm exhausted. Yes. You have a lunch to get to. Yes. I have to uh, get my life together before Chip gets home. Excellent. Uh, I'm hoping he watched Survivor on the plane so we yeah. can discuss. Honestly, I'd love to hear his thoughts on it, too, because Chip always, I feel like, has very emotional reactions to certain players that he doesn't like and i gotta know who's got those targets on their back well i want a jelinski he's gonna hate soda oh really he's, he's gonna be like she's too peppy like yeah, he, yeah, yeah i mean energy. i think he zones in on who would actually annoy him yeah. at the camp if he was there yeah and also i told elliot last night i was like with the way that the ages seem you better audition soon or you're going to age out of this show. <laughs> the Morgan young? boys going undercover. We yep. should maybe just watch it together next week because yeah. he'll be home. Oh, 100%. That sounds oh, great. Oh, shit. All right. Well, this got real. Yep. Yeah.